Hi guys. Today we'll see about a, a brief uh, introduction about uh, GD and T. So GD and T, it stands for geometric dimensioning and T for tolerance. So this GD and T is useful for every mechanical engineer when he goes, when he or she goes for the job. So this is going to be applied in each and every manufacturing industry which is related to mechanical mainly. Right? So before this, as you see geometric dimensioning and tolerance. Each and every component or each and every part that is going to be manufactured should be quality. It should be in excellent quality and it should produce with minimum amount of time. So each and every component has some particular dimensions. So we have to know how much a component is to be manufactured with respect to length, width, height or it may be a, an angle of rotation. Right? Each and every component has to get dimensions. Without dimension we can't manufacture any component. So for the sake of dimensioning we need GDNT geometric dimension and tolerance. Based on this GDNT each and every component is going to be produced in a manufacturing industry through a production line. Right? And each and every dimension should have a tolerance tolerance in the sense plus or minus some value we will see about this so why we have to use this GDNT in order to produce a part with excellent quality with less manpower and with less production time for that purpose we use this GDNT and also the product or the component, the outcome of the component from the machine should be exact in dimensions that what the customer is required. So for that we use this GDNT. So for modeling this component we use different softwares and that is a different issue. We use some CAD softwares and we do some analysis and we do some design next analysis then quality and then the output for manufacture that is a different scenario right for designing a product we need some dimensions how much the particular component should be for the usage right for that we use GDNT so what about this tolerance? In the world, none of the product or no one is going to produce a product with exact size. There should be some upper limit as well as the lower limit for the production of the component. So that upper limit and lower limit we call as a tolerance that is a tolerance zone suppose in order to explain it clearly I need to manufacture a simple plate of dimension 50 mm and with something around 10 mm with these two dimensions I can't manufacture this plate exactly I can manufacture but not exactly because 
during the manufacturing process this dimension may vary it may vary so for that reason we have to give some upper limit as well as the lower limit so what this limit says is upper limit in the sense 50 this plate can go something around 0 0.2 50 plus 0 0.2 means 50.2 it can go up to 50.2 mm when it comes to minus lower limit 50 minus 0 0.2 49.0 right? right so it can come up to 49.8 so this 0 0.2 plus and minus 0 0.2 we call as a upper limit and lower limit respectively so these both we combine as a tolerance. So now we can say 50 mm, so 50 plus or minus 0 0.2, this is called as a tolerance zone. So without this tolerance, we can't manufacture a path exactly. Similarly, with respect to width. So for this 0 0.2, I have taken as an example, it can be 0 0.5, it can be 1, it can be 2, 0 0.25, 0 0.1, maybe. It depends upon the usage of the component, where this component is going to be used, or it depends on the type of the component we manufacture, and what is the application of the component. Right? This is called as a tolerance. So dimensioning, as we have seen this, this is called as a dimensioning of component. With these dimensions, I can manufacture this plate. Length, width and thickness. These are the three dimensions that we require for manufacturing this particular plate. This is, these are called as a dimensions. 155. This is called as a tolerance. And this entire thing we call as a geometry. This entire plate we call as a geometry. So this is called as a geometric dimension and tolerance. Right? And there are 14 symbols for this dimension and using tolerance. For that form, orientation, location and run out. These are four parameters that define a component. Suppose if you take an example of a duster, this is called as a form. Orientation. How much it is oriented? Okay. Location. Where it is located? 
here, here, side, that side, and run out. Basically, this run out is for circular components. We will see it later. Right? So this is about the form, orientation, and location. In these categories, there are different types of GDNTs. First one is flatness. We'll see in detail later. Next one is straightness. Cylindricity. Circularity. Perpendicularity. Parallelism. Angularity. Position. Profile of surface. Right? Profile of line. Run out. Total run out. Concentricity. These are the symbols. Symmetry. By using these 14 symbols, we are going to define a component with respect to form. orientation location these four is used to control the form of a component as I said flatness right straightness these four are used to control the form of a component and this is used for orientation. These three symbols are used for defining orientation of the component. Right? These three are used for location. Locating a component. Similarly, this location is applicable for these two as well. And this is completely a runout which is used for cylindrical components. Defining a cylindrical component with respect to geometric dimensioning and tolerances. 
so by using all these symbols we have to define a component based on its applications and based on the dimensions so in the next section we will see what are these exactly related to is some examples right thank you if you like this session please share subscribe yeah meet you in the next section thanks